father, a priest who has stood and uh, has basically with the courage to, to, to stand for what the church has taught for through all these years. I want to tell you, Father, I, I'm not Catholic and I hope that's okay. But when, when, I, when I started speaking on this pro-life movement, everywhere I went, they said, you must be Catholic. You must be Catholic. Do you know why? Because it was the Catholic Church that started this thing, that got the people out, that got the voices heard, and it was a, a testimony to those in the Catholic Church who came and were a voice for the voiceless. It is only fitting that the Catholics rise now and finish the job. Thank you. This is now Father Peter, Peter Gideon, and uh, it's sometimes people's names fit them. It's interesting. The Gideon Bibles, we welcome Father Gideon. Thanks so much. Brother Joseph Clee is a better looking fellow. He called me uh, two nights ago and he said, I see that you're on the program a little later in the afternoon. He said, but uh, he didn't realize how crowded his own schedule was. He had some things he needed to do. He asked me to switch with him. And I said, well, that's good because I didn't realize how crowded my schedule is. I'm welcoming a missionary this afternoon who's arriving at the airport at one o'clock and uh, that just decomplexifies the schedule. Undoubtedly, if you're here later this afternoon, you'll recognize him because he'll be wearing, Brother Cleve will be wearing, as I am, a sin-fighting suit. Someone has said we're, we're running a little behind schedule, so they've asked me to be short. I just wanted to remind all of us here today that when we're on a long journey, and it's been nearly 40 years since Roe versus Wade, we need to look around at our fellow pilgrims and, and speak an encouraging word and offer an encouraging presence. Last fall, when I learned about the heartbeat bell, and was urged to motivate my parishioners to helping pass this bill before Christmas. And obviously we did not. I went before them and I said, okay, we're going to pray together. We're going to call our senators and I realized that for a lot of folks, that's a very daunting thing to do. So there I was, dressed in my vestments, as we call them, giving this homily. And I took out my cell phone and I said, now this is how you do it. And I pushed the button and I had the senators, a whole list of them programmed in there. And I pressed dial. I don't know whether any other preacher has in the midst of preaching called senators. Uh, <laughs> well, yes. I didn't think I'd be doing this here today. Anybody else? Take out your cell phone. I'm going to give you the phone number of Senate President Thomas Niehaus. We are going to make the wires hot. All right. Come on now. The number is 1-614-2500. Eight zero eight two. Somebody's going to get a busy signal, I'm sure. It says it can't be completed as dialed. I don't know why not.
we're on a journey. It's been almost 40 years. That's obviously a biblical number. I would believe that the journey is near an end. Let's not waver at this moment. Let's not lose heart. Continue to pray. Continue to call. Continue to encourage one another to be steadfast. God bless. Now you have.